Hi there, everyone. Authors want their readers to feel the events being described in a story. They hope their characters will seem real to their readers, and thus we see the use of direct quotation marks in storybooks, in novels, in other accounts that deal with narratives. Now, one of the best ways to achieve this realism is by letting the characters in our stories speak for themselves. Now, first off, a direct quotation represents a person's exact speech or thoughts, word per word, and we enclose them in quotation marks like what you see in the sentence below. I won the spelling bee in school today is the direct quotation. On the other hand, an indirect quotation reports only the general meaning of a person's speech or thoughts and does not require quotation marks since it's not meant to be word per word or verbatim. Now look at the transfer transformation in the previous sentence. The quotation marks have disappeared because the writer merely reported the general thought of what she said. If you're going to write introductory expressions, we use the comma or colon. Okay, like what you see here. Our teacher declared is the introductory expression. And then, through spaces, we write the opening quotation marks before writing the line. So this is just a recap of using commas and colons. If you're writing a concluding expression, now this time it comes after the quotation, not before it, but after, since it's concluding. If the quotation is a declarative statement, use a comma instead of the period before closing it with direct quotation marks. And then a few spaces, write the concluding expression the teacher announced. Take note of these small mechanics rules because you'll be, especially those who are taking up creative writing and you're going to write your own narratives someday, you may want to remember this rule well. As even though it seems subtle, it makes a big difference if you're going to publish your works. You may also want to counter check this with other materials. If, if on the other hand, the quotation ends with a question mark or exclamation point, you don't need to add any comma anymore. Simply close it with the use of quotation marks and then a few spaces, write the concluding expression. Okay, I think that's clear. We use a comma after part of a quoted sentence followed by an interrupting expression. I think we've encountered this when we ran through the rules of using the comma. So interrupting expressions are found in the middle, not at the start nor at the end, but in the middle of the sentence. And thus we need to use two commas for this. Always place a comma or a period inside the final quotation mark. Here, the final quotation is please turn to chapter 4. We put the period inside, not outside the quotation. Later on, we'll know why. Always place a semicolon or colon outside the final quotation mark. It's possible that 
your you have formed a compound sentence and again a compound sentence contains two independent clauses in this sample we have there is a rally today that is the first independent clause another indicated that it had been postponed is the final independent clause and we set these two off by using the semicolon yes this construction is possible and honored or if you're enumerating items use the colon after the quoted material place a question mark or exclamation mark inside the final quotation mark if the end end mark is part of the quotation now this is reviewing why we need to put the punctuation mark inside the quoted material later on we'll identify when it ought to be placed outside we put the question mark and the exclamation point inside because these statements are said by the people being reported by the writer here the student is the one really asking did you find a math book in here last period in the second sentence it's the student exclaiming that he or she got a perfect score when a sentence ends with a direct quotation it may seem that you need one end mark for the quoted material and one end mark for the entire sentence However, when the question must end with a question mark or an exclamation mark, but the entire sentence calls for a period, the period is dropped. So we don't need to put too much punctuation marks. Sometimes this happens. The quoted question comes at the end of the entire sentence. In this case, we need not add an extra period. We simply end the sentence with the question mark and the closing quotation marks. However, if the end mark is not part of the quoted material, if the end mark is meant to mark the reporter's statement or question, then you place it outside. Did Mrs. Lynn say, I will not accept any papers after today? So this time we end it with the question mark instead of the closing quotation marks. Why is this? Who's the one asking in this sentence? It's the reporter. Mrs. Lynn made a declarative statement. I will not accept any papers after today. She's not asking. That's why we place the, the question mark outside the quoted material because the one who's asking is the reporter. I couldn't believe that our principal actually said no school on Thursday. Who's exclaiming? It's the one reporting what the principal had said. Okay? Okay. Now I hope you understand when we place excuse me when we place the punctuation mark inside or outside the quotation Other examples Who said I need help The one who needs help would probably express it as an exclamatory sentence there, and the one who wrote the entire sentence is asking who had said, I need help. We place the question mark outside the quoted material because the one who's asking again is the reporter. The one in need of help is the one exclaiming. Therefore, we end the quoted material simply with the closing quotation marks. Let's go to writing dialogues. To those who want to be playwrights someday, this is very important. 
We begin a new paragraph with each change of speaker. Aside from playwrights, those who want to write their novels or short stories someday and have them published, this mechanics is very important. As you notice in this set of paragraphs, we change paragraphs when we change the voice. In the first paragraph, it's Mark who speaks. Now, since we want to report what Mrs. Abel told Mark, we change paragraphs, like what you see here on screen. And then, change paragraph if we want to return to Mark. And then, another one if we want to switch back to the teacher. Now, you know the rule. For quotations longer than a paragraph, put quotation marks at the beginning of each paragraph and at the end of the final paragraph. Okay, the last quotation marks ought to be put only at the final paragraph. Here we have a sample speech by a counselor. So the counselor talks about career choices here. As you can see in the first paragraph, you only encounter the opening quotation marks. No final quotation marks yet. Second paragraph. Let's continue from first, consider the, etc., etc. Still, no final quotation mark. Third paragraph. Second, make sure that, etc., etc. Still no final quotation marks. Second to the last paragraph. Same pattern. We only have the opening quotation marks. But as for the last paragraph, we now find the closing quotation marks. It's to signal that this is the last paragraph in his, in his or her speech. We've been talking about the double quotation marks. Let's now study the single quotation marks. When do we use these and when do we not use these? Those are the questions. To simply put, we use a pair of single quotation marks if and only if we are writing a quotation within a quotation. Like in the following sample sentence, my mother reported, our superintendent said the school system is sometimes unfairly malaligned. Who states this part? The school system is sometimes unfairly maligned. It's the superintendent. And the mother is simply reporting what the superintendent had said. Here, the superintendent is quoting from another source material. We apply the single quotation marks to signal that this is a fragment of another quoted material. So it's a quotation within another. Let's test your quoting skills. I want you to answer these online exercises. The links to these are found in the description below. Now stay tuned for the next set of punctuation marks. Now, before you answer these exercises, I want to emphasize again, make sure you have viewed the first parts of this video. I understand you want to challenge yourselves, but we don't know everything, right? So it's wise that we review the fundamentals before jumping in to the real task. So stay tuned for the next set of videos. Bye.